We're out in the kayak on a backcountry lake I've never been to before, and the goal is simple. Figure out what type of fish are in this lake, catch a couple. Well guys, welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, we do a little bit of everything here. We do ice fishing, we do fly fishing, we do international trips, we do flying trips, and we just do some drive-to trips. In my backyard, Northwest Ontario, I live in my dream area. I know I travel a long ways to fish sometimes, but there is spectacular fishing in my backyard today. We're trying a brand new lake. I've heard nothing about this place before. I thought it would be perfect for the kayak because there's no real boat launch. There's just this little bay behind us. Anyways, we're gonna launch the kayak. I'll tell you how I picked this lake, what we're looking for, and I'll just lead you through the process. You're gonna figure it out with me and hopefully we catch some fish. But first, we're gonna untie this Old Town kayak, get her loaded up, and uh, we've got a couple hours to fish, and the sun is shining. Today we're using the Autopilot 120, which means it's 12 feet long. This is not stock on the kayak. I mounted a tripod on the nose. Oh. Oh, that hurt. Oh, did that hurt. Oh. Oh, wow. Yep. All right. Okay. It's back. It's solid. It is always nice to take a paddle just in case you actually have to. Oh, maybe we'll just fish barefoot today. This water is going to be cold, I think. I know. Here we go. Back at it. This is beautiful. Look at this little creek. Wow. What a, what a place we live in. So I get asked a lot, you know, because I know a lot of people don't kayak fish, a lot of people are interested, is how tippy is it? Well, as you can see, I'm standing. I've caught muskies in the kayak standing. But the thing is, you are likely going to fall out of the kayak before you actually tip it. I want to insert a clip from a couple years ago, two years ago at Shining Falls Lodge. I did a kayak tip test. I took the 12 foot pedal drive. I, it was a nice warm evening and I launched myself off it a few times. Like I said, you will fall out of it before you tip it. It is very tough to tip. You, you can tip it, but you're just never going to do it fishing. I'm going to drop the LVS 34 down. We have it on the HD shuttle. This is a new shuttle I'm using this year. I'm going to get a docking system for it yet. Just don't have one quite yet, but it's easy just to have it by my feet. So yeah, I'll link the website below fish online. It's what I use before I scout a new lake. If I'm in Manitoba, I use the Master Angler book or there is another stocking type list. When I'm in Ontario, I use the fish online app. I did a full video breaking it down, but basically it, it gives you info. I wouldn't say it has everything listed on it. Sometimes there's, you know, species that might be missed, but it's a very good starting point. So this one said it has smallmouth bass, walleyes, pike. So right now it's been pretty cold. So typically in the spring, I'm looking for that warm water for bass moving up, crappies moving up, pike, whatever. Basically right now I'm looking for some sort of extended rock or rubble. I'm thinking maybe looking at those points on their way to the shallower water. A lake like this, they could just pull up to any shoreline. There isn't, there isn't too much going on, but there's a rock pile. This point sticks way out here. Might be fish hanging off the backside there. Almost looks like a tree on the bottom. We'll see. I'm gonna drop. I got two rods along, only two. It's a fluke style bait, one's a drop shot. Try this drop shot and see. Okay, whatever they are, they're small. I don't want them. I'll keep this rod out in a boat. Out in a boot. Still scanning. This time of year can be a lot of looking. That back part of the lake there looks like it's shallow, but tough to say. Water's 47. Some deeper rocks there, and it looks kind of fishy. This looks kind of fluffy on the bottom. It's like another tree or something. I guess there's just so much flooded wood on this lake. Maybe those are fish down there. Tough to say. My bait's gonna be close very soon. No bueno. That is something bigger. I think that's a beaver. Pretty sure that's a beaver. <laughs> Some sort of animal that was under fish. I'm gonna try trolling a crank jerk bait around. That's a fish. Started trolling, hooked our first fish. I don't know what it is. 
hopefully it gives us some clues. I'm thinking bass right now with how it's fighting. That was an 11 feet of water near shore. Feels like it wants to jump. Trolling an X-Wrap. I think we got a bass. All right, confirmed. There are smallmouth in this lake and they're shallower than I thought. So there's a few things we figured out with that one fish. Mike Iconelli, professional bass guy, is a saying, and he says, I just need one bite. And I don't know if this means we're gonna catch a bunch now, but we did get one bite in 12 feet of water, which is basically shallower than we have been fishing up until this point. Not small, not big. Well, pretty small, pretty small. <laughs> but hey, that's one on a jerk bait. Let's cast back there again, maybe they're shallower. I anchored us right now. We learned a little bit. Water's 47, 48, which in my experience is a temperature that they like to eat jerk baits. They would a jerk bait. Every bait has an optimal way to work it. So I don't have a few. For a jerk bait, it's exactly that. You're giving a jerk, you're waiting. That pause, and in the springtime, that pause can drive them crazy in a good way. We're gonna float back over there. I'm gonna cast the mouth of this little shallows. I saw some nice boulders, so we'll see. Maybe that was the only one, but typically in the spring, you're, there's not just like one fish, there's a few there. So yeah, this is a nasty old deep dive and x wrap. It's got like some brown water inside of it from who knows when, obviously it's cracked. Probably not even suspending properly, but hey, whatever it takes. Okay, what did we learn from that fish? Well, we'll keep trolling, I guess. Kind of in here is where we got that fish. I'm not gonna let too much line out. There's a fish instantly, right near shore. Wow, okay, they might be shallow. We might be onto something. That's very close to the other one. I'm gonna anchor us. Okay, species number two in this lake, we can confirm the northern pike. Pretty much guess any lake in Sunset Country has pike. And she gone. Eight feet of water and some nice boulders here. Maybe there'll be another bass. Oh, that's another fish. Are you kidding me? We found him, this one stupid little stretch. I think it's a bass. Nope, we found the pike. Same one. <laughs> Would you look at that pike? That is the size that hook you on the hand. There you go, beautiful. Well, I thought that was a bass and it ended up being the same pike. That was funny, okay, <laughs> trolling. <laughs> Uh, I'm not a huge trolling fan. Not against it. I will do whatever it takes to catch fish, but it ain't the most exciting thing to watch. There we go. Off the point. It's got some weight. Probably a pike. Feels r quite heavy now. It's just sitting under the boat. Ooh, that's a nice bass. I thought it was a pike, just with how he hooked it sideways. Okay, so the bass are pretty shallow, because I'm in 10 feet casting up. So we are gonna rule out the deep water. We are gonna start focusing on shallower rocks, which kind of, you know, you have a mindset when you come into a trip of how you're gonna catch them, and you have to be willing to change that. I was thinking there's gonna be a couple deep rocks, we'd find them on live scope, and we would just light it up. Now. We're kind of casting, trolling. I'm not, I'm not really seeing them on live scope. They're, they're hiding in the boulders, so that's all right. You don't always have to see them on live scope. All right, figuring this out. 47 degree water. I don't think we found the juice yet or the best bait either. Look how this, this bait just sinks like a rock. I need to get a better jerk bait. We need to find the sweet spot, but this is a good segue into today's video sponsor, Heavy Hauler. The gearbox, that bag that you saw last year. You saw me bring it on fly-ins, had it around the pedestal of my Alumacraft pretty much like all season long, and it fits perfectly in the back of the kayak. There is two sizes. This is the smaller one. It's great, especially in the boat, because like I said, you fit it around the pedestal, but for a person that, you know, hops in other people's boats a lot, goes on fly-ins, all this stuff, it's just nice to have a bag to kind of move things around. So this size is for your smaller, size tackle trays on the side. It's got the Velcroed pouch where you can keep, you know, miscellaneous plastics, line, all that stuff. It's got a couple holes, grommets, whatever you want to call them to, you can just have your leader sticking out all the time. It's really easy to rig. Pliers on the side, more mesh. And then obviously it's got the, the shoulder strap if you want. But uh, another cool thing that they came out with, the heavy hauler guys, is a jerkbait box. 
couple things I like about it. It's got holes so the water drains because there's nothing worse than, worse than having, you know, wet baits in there. And it's just a cool design that it's really easy to fit a lot of cranks in this little tray. You don't have that problem with just a ton of them being tangled together because the most you're going to fit in one of these slots is, is two. So anyways, this is new from Heavy Hauler. And I'm going to switch, I'm going to switch jerk baits. Something a little bit smaller, something that isn't 15 years old and has water inside of it. All right, got the head cam on. I know I look dorky, but just give you a little better perspective. Hmm. Well, it looks like there's fish 50 feet out. We'll bomb at those first. We're going to try to pick them off one at a time. I don't know if this crank's going deep enough. Guess we'll find out shortly. Yep. Lost him. All right. Let's get serious. Oh, there's two of them coming. Oh, I saw that as soon as I turned the live scope. Come on. These fish are hunting. They're just like chasing me to the boat and I'm running out of space. There he's coming. Got him. There's like three of them there. Do you see that? Woohoo! Man, took a bit of looking around with very little of show and I was like, I don't know, maybe there's, maybe there's no fish in this lake. And then it was just like one little clue that fish were shallower than I thought. Not big, two pounders, but hey, I think we're gonna just smoke them on this point. The biggest thing in fishing is just finding the fish. Now we've found them, now it's refining how to catch them. I think any sort of craw, Ned, swim bait, whatever, anything near the bottom. You can see how the gearbox fits nicely in the back here. We're gonna go back into it and figure out what we want. Drop shot will be good. We got a drop shot rigged already actually. Yeah, let's do a little drop shotting first. Okay, there's, that's, that's it. That's the mother load. Look at all of them. Look at all of them around my drop shot. One of them has to eat. There we go. Just reeled into him. Ooh, that feels a little better. I get a jerk bait in the foot. Jerk bait's good, but you just, you run out of, you run out of space by the boat sometimes. That's why I was talking about trolling, but also having something secondary you can drop down like a drop shot. That's the biggest fish of the day. Not a derby winner, but that's cool. Okay, there they are, 10, 15 feet over in front. It's a little toss. You can see that weight shoot down, whoop. I can't see my bait exactly, but I just know there's fish all around. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Some nicer ones. Cool. Another one on the drop shot under the boat. Yeah, feels like the closer ones, a little easier to drop shot. And then as they get further away, the jerk baits, a fantastic option. All right, I'm gonna stay far enough off that I'm not even really live scoping this. I just, we've kind of found where the fish are on this point, so. This is the Daiwa Tatula 71 Ned Rig Rod, Tatula Elite. And you bring a lot of gear on here and it just turns into a little bit of a circus. Two, three rods and just pick rods you can do a lot of techniques with. So the other rod is a 7.6, same series Tatula Elite. Hair jig rod, that's the medium light. You can do hair jigs, top waters, you know, small swim baits, drop shot, that sort of stuff. And then obviously this one is a little more of a power fishing rod, 7.1. You can use tubes, Sankos, jerk baits, but these two rods kind of cover what typically needed for spring bassing. I don't know. I don't know. I got a hair jig handy. We'll try this. Normally hair jigs are just irresistible at this time of year. Eight feet away. Jerk bait still seems like the best. There's that hair jig falling. I'm just gonna do a smooth, steady reel. Got him. Wow. We have to work on these fish for a bit. Well, caught them on jerk baits, caught them on drop shots, caught them on hair jigs. Cool. All right, we'll, we'll keep looking around a little bit. We'll come back to this point yet, but yeah, very textbook rocky point in the spring. And that's where the bass were. Thought they were gonna be deeper still, but yeah, this was just a main lake point. I got the lake to myself. That's the beauty of some of these back lakes too, is you just don't run into anybody. Ooh, we got another point looking spicy up ahead. There's a big point that sticks out here. There's definitely more fish here. A little more fish in the other spot, but look at all them. Oh, it's a shark tank, come on. Oh, they keep hitting it. Oh, hit it right under the yak. Oh, 
amazing. It was just bound to happen with how many we're chasing there. But some people don't realize is, and that our small mouth and large mouth stay open in our zone through the winter time all year. So I know for some people bass is closed and I am sorry about that, but then come up here. Okay, well, I'm just gonna drop under the boat with the hair jig. Look at this, I'm just gonna drop down and jig a hair jig. Look at all of them. They're racing, oh! Not my first choice when I have to fish vertical as a hair jig, but that was cool. There's a lot down here. Yeah, there's one coming. He's coming, he's coming, two of them. Got him. Getting my bass fix. Ooh, that might've been a fish. They have been hitting more than once. Okay, he's got a little meat. There you go, I would say the top bait of the day would be this white X-Wrap, but like you saw, they bit kind of everything. And it is just crazy how many lakes have smallmouth around Kenora. I don't know if I mentioned this on video or not, but there's a railway that runs, you know, across Canada. Pretty much anywhere in Northwest Ontario, they stocked bass by train car. There's, if you look online, you can find info on it and thought about doing a longer film on it at some point. But basically, if you want to try a new bass lake, pick anything near the railway and it'll have smallmouth in it. Jeez, these fish are aggressive. They're right under me right now. I can probably just drop this down. Look at all of them. Ooh. Oh my gosh. We are maybe gonna crank a couple here on the net to end the day. Oh, baby. Just right under the kayak. Ooh. Ooh. Anything too special yet, but. Look at all them back there. I'm just gonna give it a little toss. Look at that, falling right there. You can see him coming up. He ate it on the fall. This is fun. Try hopping on the bottom here. Ah, they're a couple feet away. Let's give it a little toss so I can... The vertical hopping doesn't seem to do as good as if you can get them chasing a bit. I think he's chasing. I think he's eating. Well, it's not the lure today. Ooh, there's some fish in here. That is a fish. Wow, they are shallow. I did not think they were gonna be this shallow already. Well, we went to a new lake, we figured out the pattern, and we caught a bunch of bass. Will I be back to this lake? I don't know. Nothing too big. There wasn't anything that makes me think I need to get back here, but just one more lake off the list. And if you guys are interested in getting into kayak fishing, it's a blast. It opens so many opportunities, so many little gems in the backcountry. And like I said, you're not gonna see another person on the water. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. Wear your life jackets and don't forget to pause your jerk baits.